and 11 at the literal portion of the gate on other side. 11, 11, 22 cupola, which shows the 22 number of years which were taken by the Taj Mahal behind its construction. Taj Mahal took 22 years to build, right? The white main instructions of black letter. You can see the black letter there. Everybody, look at the black writing. These are Arabic letters which they had taken from the holy book of the Muslims called the Quran. From right to left. This one verse of the Quran, which is morning prayer of the Muslims, called Surate Bhakti. They are smaller at the bottom, but as they go higher and higher, letters growing bigger in their size. Had the step not been taken care of, the letters would have got melted and become illegible on the top. So this is an optical illusion. All, right? All the letters look the same inside. Now it's with the white bit. Oh, sure, sure. I watched them. It came out with them. Uh -huh. not, uh, they might not be. Oh no, no, probably not. not. But, but I remember watching and realizing that the crack is amazing. Yeah. 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 was born in 1592 at Lahore, which is now in Pakistan. His real name was Khurra. In 1628, when he became the first, when he became the ruler of the country, actually, because uh, he was the prince till 1628. In 1628, he became the fifth ruler of this dynasty. He entitled himself by the name of Shah Jahan. This was the tradition of the royal family when they ascended the throne. They entitled themselves with the special names. Shah Jahan means the king of the world. Shah Jahan, the king of the world. His wife Mumtaj Mahal was born in 1593 in Persia, which is Iran now. And her real name was Arjumand Bano Begum. Well, Arjumand Bano Begum was not only profusely charming, but also the goddess of celestial beauty. So that king conferred an entitle on her Mum Taj Mahal, which means my crown of palace. 
Mum Taj Mahal, my crown of palace. And from the name of the lady derived the word or name of this building, Taj Mahal, from Mum Taj Mahal. They got married in 1612. She was his second wife. He had three wives. But unfortunately, first and third wife had no children. Only the second wife had children. And during 19 years of their married life, she had 17 pregnancies, 3 miscarriages and 14 deliveries, 14 children. Out of them, only 6 could survive. 4 sons and 2 daughters. In 1631, when she was going to suppress a rebellion, and he was going to suppress a rebellion at the southern part of his kingdom, the queen also insisted on him to be taken along. He persuaded her not to go because of her being then pregnant. But the lady said, when I had accompanied you during my pregnancies in several battles field, then why not this time? He said, this time doctor has suggested you not to come with me. But he, she insisted him a lot and finally he gave in and took her along. Okay. There only she delivered her 14th child, who was a female baby. And this delivery eventually proved to be fatal, leading her towards the death. One of their doctors, Vajir Fah, when found that there is no hope of her survival, he told the king to have the final words. Then the king asked if she has any last wish. She took two promises. They were that he shall not marry again. Secondly, he would always be merciful towards his children. After listening to that, king wept bitterly and said, My dear wife, how can I show you that I love you more than anything in this world? This was the point of time when the idea of this great mausoleum conceived. Lady said, just built a unique and a wonderful mausoleum over my grave so that world might know how deeply you love me. Saying so, she died in the month of June, year will be 1631, after six months of her death, December 1631. The construction began here, which was finally completed in 1653. As I told, it took 22 years to build. Why it means structure itself took 17 years to build. But this is not Taj Mahal. I told you earlier, the entire complex is known as Taj, which took 22 years to build. The white building is the main muzzle where the bodies are lying. Okay, where the bodies are buried. Here, on the left and the right side of the white main building, there are two structures built up of red sandstone with the white dome. You can see one there on the right side. See, can you see that building there? Exactly similar building we have on the left side also. The one which we have on the left side is a mosque. You know mosque? Muslim temple. Which is still functioning, is still active. Every Friday, Taj Mahal remains closed. It only opens for the local uh, <coughs> local Muslims. They come here and offer pray inside in the mosque. Well, on the right side you can see that's exactly identical building which we uh, like. I'm talking about the mosque. This building is exactly similar as mosque. There is no difference between mosque and this building. Though this building never uses mosque. Do you know why? Because of the wrong direction. A mosque should face towards the Mecca. The building on the left side facing towards the Mecca. This is facing opposite direction. This building, he built just for symmetry. No use. Taj Mahal is worldwide famous for its incredible symmetry. In Taj Mahal, whatever the point you stand at, you shall find everything in proportional balance. This is the beauty of this building. He built it for symmetry. Later on, people have started calling it Royal Guest House, where nobody actually ever stayed. <laughs> because Taj Mahal is a mausoleum and no one can ever live in a mausoleum. See, there will be a lot of people inside when we go to see inside in the main mausoleum. When we walk upstairs, we go inside. There are four tombs. But two bodies. Four graves, two bodies. It is because two original, real tombs, two faked ones, replicas, cenotaphs, duplicates. Real ones, 22 feet down underneath. We can't see them. Not open for the tourists. What we can see today are the replicas. Bless you. We can see replicas only, duplicate tombs. But replicas or the duplicate tombs are in fact more beautiful than the real tombs. Real tombs are not as beautiful as replicas because Islam never allowed you to decorate the real tombs. You are not supposed to decorate the real tombs. 
you cannot beautify the real graves where the bodies are. See, they are both buried there. But one in the middle, the tomb, which is right in the middle, smaller one, is the tomb of the queen, lady. And on the left side, you can see the tomb of king, Emperor Shah Jahan. He never planned this building for himself. He built it only for his wife. But later at the time of his death, he asked his daughter to bury him next to her mother's tomb. So his daughter buried him. Okay? His tomb is bigger on the left side. Right side is empty. That is the only thing which is not in symmetry, which is not in balance. Otherwise, everything here you find in just perfect symmetry, in perfect balance, except the tomb of king. Right? See. Towers on the corners. We have four minarets on four corners. They are not spread like this. See, all the towers are slightly leaning outside. They are all tilted. It is because if any natural calamity occurs, like earthquake take place, then the towers will fall down outside thus causing no harm for the main structure. Got it? The towers. Black clouds in the background. So it is very famous saying for the about the Taj Mahal that the moods of the Taj Mahal like a different moods of a woman. You never know when it's changed. See? about the hooks we have in 1900 in Pakistan and on Richter scale it was 9.7 which even affects the dome of the Taj Mahal in the inner part of the dome we had cracks so they melt the lead glass and pass these screws these are iron hooks actually iron screws between the marble through the marble and the lead, okay, to strengthen it. Each hook is 14 inches long and the weight is two and a half kg. Two and a half kg. Since then, the remains are State called Rajasthan, which is 400 kilometers from here. They carried all the marble all the way from there on camel cart, on horse cart, on bullock cart, and well on elephant cart. This marble considered the best marble of the world. You might have heard of the Italian marble, Carrara. Have you heard of it? Region of water gets through it, owing to which it gets dirty, and in course of time, it deteriorates. Whereas when we talk about this marble, Indian marble, this is the world's hardest marble in compact, crystallized form. So it is non-porous. This non-porosity of the marble does not let the air, water, vapors, or bubbles go through it due to which it never gets dirty or stained. There is no question of its deterioration. The finest example is the Taj itself, which has been receiving rains full of acid and sulfur and during the whips of the seasons. But nothing has ever been able to rob it of its glamour and Taj it still dazzles as white as it was. Mud pack, securely Mud pack, we applied over the white marble then again they walk into the water once it gets dry. And Taj again is still uh, the building again start looking at white. So this is the best. Hardness of this marble, you know? Exactly half of the diamond. Okay, now I will let you know why this building is so famous and what is special or unique in Taj Mahal, which was not done earlier like this in other buildings. The most beautiful thing here is its marble clay 
you can see the design of the decorate
on which we were walking inside, it was not empty like this. He made four octagonal pair of carpets for that. In 1945, seven of them were fired in the palace of the Maharaja of Jaipur. But one, still safe. What happened actually, one of them was taken by an Armenian dealer. And from Armenia, it moved to US. And it is still in US, in Hawaii. In Hawaii, there is a Doris Duke Foundation of Islamic Art. And it is it's still placed there. We should give that back. We're gonna have to go over and see it. Inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter, it was same. Of like uh, the octagonal design. Yamuna is the second most sacred river in Hindu mythology. You know the first one is? Yeah, excuse me. On another banking, he wanted to build another Taj Mahal in black marble for himself. This building, white one, white Taj Mahal, he built for his wife. He wanted to have another black for himself, which is just a rumor or a false story which was created by some local people here to make their stories more interesting. It has nothing to do with the fact. Zigzag lines here. See? These zigzag lines. Typical identity of the Mughals buildings. In order to decorate their buildings, they either use trees, flowers, natural signs like sun, moon, stars, or the geometrical designs, zigzag lines, these kind of things. Never like animals or birds, because Islam not allowed you to do this. Okay? You can't make images of the real things in Islam. And trees and flowers are not considered as a living creature of this planet, as per the religious book of Islam, Quran. So they use these kind of lines here to decorate it. You can see this is a pillar which has three phases, like three parts, one, two, three. And see these zigzag lines? These zigzag lines are flat like this on one part. So these are three, one, two, three parts. You move back there. So, he applied the same concept in the, on Taj Mahal, see, when he built it. And this design is called Baage Bahisht, 
Bhage Bahisht means orchard of heaven. What is an orchard of heaven? The gardens which you can see today here, we did not have the gardens here. We had orchards here. The levels of the gardens were 8 to 10 feet down. And we had mangoes and guava trees. This is described in the holy book of the Muslims, Quran, that there will be orchards in heaven with the dry fruits. And there will be four rivers there. Each river containing different things. Four different things. And flowing from, flowing in four different directions. And the source of all the river is one mountain. So all the rivers flowing in four different directions from one mountain. Each river containing four different things. Honey, nectar, wine and milk. Well, wine is prohibited here, but it is allowed there, okay, in Islam. They allowed the wine there. What they personally believe, this is not the real life. This is a bridge which you have to cross. Your real life is life after death. This is what they believe. They don't believe like this is the real life, okay, or making this life is heaven. Making it worse, expecting for heaven. What you can do. See, same way we have four water channels here which are flowing in four different directions which are representing those four rivers of heaven. Okay? The building is octagonal. Now, irregular octagonal from outside but irregular octagonal from inside. The lady who died, who is buried here, she is actually sleeping in the heavens. In Islam, if a person died, then he or she is not died. They are actually sleeping in their graves. At the day of judgment, Muslim God Allah will decide whether to send them to hell or to heaven. But there are few people which hold the special position or a special title. So they will not be questioned at the day of judgment. They will go straight to heaven. Who are they? Martyrs. Martyrs. And what is the meaning of martyrs? And who are martyrs? Who is the martyr? The one who dies for fighting for his religion. Okay? The one who dies on re in a religious uh, battle is considered as martyr. But apart from those kind of people, the ladies who died at the given birth to a child also consider a martyr. Because they lost their life, or she lost her life while conceiving a new Islamic personality in this world. So she was a martyr. She is sleeping in the heaven. These, this octagonal structure represents the eight doors or eight entrances of heaven. That's what he made the structure octagonal, which representing the eight entrances or eight doors of heaven. None of them is closed. All this uh, eight sides or the eight walls, eight screens, having the screens actually carved screens there. All eight. These are not closed. Okay, once they closed it, it's not an entrance, not an, like a door. So these are all open through the screens. Representing the eight doors of heaven. Concept is orchard of heaven. Mughal dynasty nobody looked after. After the arrival of one of the British government, the Lord King. The garden came Yeah, okay. Okay, and there you can use the washroom. Okay. From Marble Inlay, where we can start the lunch. Okay. Then we can proceed. Okay, we'll be good. So, Argo Fort, Marble Inlay? Yeah. Yeah. The harem. Skip that picture. That wasn't in his way. That's part of the... To me, I mean, the biggest difference between Argo Fort and Red Fort is... Yeah, just, just, just keep, go, go. That's fine. It, it makes for a very interesting shot. It does. That is a shot. Ready? Go.
Did you get your shot? I did. Good. Thank you.